Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at hypothesis testing for zero correlation so we can answer questions from exercise 1c. Now what we're effectively doing in this chapter here is having a look at that PMCC value and deciding is it high enough or potentially negative enough for us to say yes there is correlation in this data here or no there is no correlation in this data here. Um, it matters how much data we have as well so the um, value at which we're going to accept correlation is dependent upon how much data we have in our data set as well. And we have a big chart to tell us what does the PMCC need to be for us to say yes, there is correlation or no, there is no correlation. So it's using that PMCC value that we calculated before. And this here is the chart I was talking about. You can see down the right hand side, these are the amount of data values that we have um, and then if we look across, these are the different significance levels that we have to, um, that we have to live up to. Um, and if we go down to, say, let's do a quick example of 10 to a 5% significance level, the value that the product moment correlation coefficient has to be above or potentially below is 0.5494 or below minus 9.5494 on the negative side if you've got negative correlation. So we don't have two identical tables, one for positive values, one for negative values. You can just use this and treat it symmetrically. It's the same on the positive and negative side. So it does depend on your sample size. And what we say is that if you've got a small sample, you need more evidence that the, um, that the product moment, that, the, that there is correlation and therefore the product moment correlation coefficient must be a higher value. If you've got a larger set of data, um, then and it's fitting in line only to about a 0.3 um, PMCC value, then that is enough evidence for us. So the more evident, the more data points you have, the less kind of evidence you need that they are forming a straight line. The fewer data points you have, the more evidence you need that they are um, forming a straight line. So in this question here, we have a question about a scientist who takes 30 observations of the two ma of masses of two reactants in an experiment. She calculates the PMCC value to be R equals minus 0.45. The scientist believes there is no correlation between the masses of the reactants. Test at the 10% significance level, the scientists claim at stating your hypothesis clearly. Now, so let's start with our hypothesis. We need H0 to be, now this funny P shape symbol here, it's not quite a P, it's actually a Greek letter rho, and sometimes fancy people use this for the PMCC if you're taking the PMCC of the whole of the data set. If you're just taking the, the um, PMCC of a sample, then you would use R. But here we're taking the PMCC of the whole data set, all of those 30 observations, so we use the letter rho. Uh, it's kind of like a P, but uh, a bit of an angle. So P is equal to zero, that's our null hypothesis, that there's no uh, correlation. And then the alternative hypothesis is that there is some correlation, whether that might be positive or negative. Now, if you remember back to A-level, uh, AS-level stats, um, if we have a 10% significance level with a two-tailed test, like this one here is, then we need to split the 10% up into two lots of 5%. So we're going to use... 5% that it has positive correlation and 5% that it's going to have negative correlation. And a sample size of 30, so eventually when we get down to it, we're going to use the row 30 um, on this chart here. But let's just take it for to start with um, that we have a sample size of 10. And let's just have a look at what's happening here. Our product moment correlation coefficient would have to be at least 0.5494 or below minus 9.5494. Okay, uh, if it was, um, if it was, so this, yeah, this is what's happening here. We have a sample size of 10, 0 0.5494 is that critical uh, value, both in the negative and in the negative and the positive side. So if it's anywhere in between that, say 0 0.2 or minus 0 0.1, then we're going to accept H0, which is to say that there is no correlation. So H0 is always no correlation. Outside of that region, either below 0 0.5494 or above 0 0.5494, we can reject H0, which is to say we accept the alternative hypothesis, which is that there is some correlation here. 
Um, yeah. So uh, if we think about it, if our sample size is 10 and we get a PMCC of 0.5, um, we would say that there is not enough evidence to reject H0, so we conclude that the correlation is 0. However, when we have a sample size of 20, it does change a little bit. When we have a sample size of 20, we need to move down to row 20 on our table. And actually, we will, because there are more data points here, there is, um, we actually require less evidence that they form a perfectly straight line because we would expect some natural deviation when you have a sample size of 20. So here, if we had a PMCC of 0.5, we would actually say this time we would actually reject H0 and accept the alternative hypothesis that there is some correlation. So with the same PMCC value, um, when it's a smaller sample size, we are going to have more of a chance of accepting no correlation. But when it's a larger sample size, we don't need as much evidence and there probably is more likely going to be correlation in that data. So with a larger sample size, there is a larger critical region where the original hypothesis will be rejected. In our sample, in a very small sample, um, if our sample is very small, it is very difficult to be sure about our hypothesis, so we generally reject them. With a larger sample size, we can be more sure that our answers reflect the true population's data. So let's get back to our question now. We had a sample size of 30. So in this case here, it was 0.3061 that was the critical value to say, yes, there is correlation, or no, there isn't correlation. Because minus 0.54 is outside of that um, boundary from 0.3061 to minus 0.3061, we say that um, the scientist, based on the scientist data, there is enough evidence to reject H0 and conclude there is correlation between the two reactants. So just a reminder here, because we were working at the 10% level, but it was a two-tailed test, we had to use the 0.5 column because there would be 0.5 um, kind of probability on each end. This table here is being calculated by some very clever mathematicians who would, we don't need to go into the detail of where this table has come from, um, but uh, it's, it's one we're going to use. It's in the back of the formula booklet. Okay, moving on to the final question then. The table from the large data set shows a daily maximum gust, x in knots, and a daily maximum relative humidity, y in percentage, in Leeming for a sample of eight days in May 2015. Find the PMCC of this data. If you do it on your calculator, you get 0.1149. Test at the 10% significance level whether there is evidence of positive correlation between the daily maximum gust and the daily maximum humidity. State your hypothesis clearly. Now this one here is slightly different to the previous question because it's not a two-tailed test. We are hypothesizing in the alternate hypothesis that there is positive correlation, or in other words that R is a positive value, or rho is a positive value. So in this case here we're going to use this significance level in each tail of, uh, of in the tail of uh, 10%. We're only going to be looking for positive correlation. So in this case here, where we have 8 as a sample size, we actually require 0.5067 to be the critical value which we are either accepting or rejecting correlation. In this case, because R is clearly much lower than 0.5067, we are going to accept H0. And remember, accepting H0 is to say that there is no correlation. You always have your null hypothesis as no correlation. Your alternative hypothesis will be yes, there is correlation. Right then, your turn to have a go at this question here. Then you'll need your calculator to work out the product moment correlation coefficient. So pause the video and try this question out. Right, let's get started on this question then. So we have the first part, which is uh, state what is measured by the product moment correlation coefficient. So the product moment correlation coefficient measures the strength of correlation between two variables on a line of best fit, on a straight line of best fit. And it also tells you the type of correlation that there is as well, whether it's positive or negative. So that would be your answer to part A. 
Moving on, 12 students sat two biology tests, one theoretical test and one practical test. Their marks are shown below. Calc find the product moments correlation coefficient. So just a reminder how you do this on your calculator. You go to menu and then you go to option number six, I think it is. Um, you then select bivariate data, which is option number two, I think. Type in your data set and then you're going to hit option. And then you go into select option number four, and then you get your um, line of best fit values. And your product moments correlation coefficient here is 0.9354. That's pretty good correlation there. Um, it would be difficult to say whether it's enough for um, for 12 students for a sample size of 12, but we'll cross our fingers and hope so. Uh, a teacher claims that the students who do well on their theoretical tests also tend to do well on their practical tests. Notice how this question has been phrased. It's also tend to do well on their practical tests. It's not saying that a theoretical test means that you will do well on your practical test. That implies some sort of causation. It's just looking for correlation, whether two things um, have an, maybe an underlying um, influence on each other or maybe there is an underlying factor that affects both variables and hence they can be correlated. Part C is test at the 5% significance level your hypothesis clearly. Well let's go and grab those tables then. We are looking at the 5% significance level and the hypothesis here is that students tend to do well on the theoretical test also do well on their practical test. So it's clearly stated in that question then that the alternative hypothesis is going to be a greater than zero um, PMCC. So we'll use in the um, initial hypothesis is R equals zero. The alternative hypothesis is R is bigger than zero. And then to the 5% significance level, the critical value, we need to start at 12 and go across and then down from this point here. So the critical value here is going to be 0.4973. So there we are. So that is uh, tested. So um, the teachers claim um, is correct. The teacher's claim is correct. Uh, give an interpretation of the value of 0 0.05 in your hypothesis test. Well, the 0 0.05 refers to the degree of probability um, at which... Um... Okay, so moving on to the last bit, question D here then. So give an interpretation of the value 0 0.05 in your hypothesis test. Well, the 0 0.05 refers to the, the fact that there is a potential, a 5% chance, that actually there is no correlation. But what we generally say is that 5% is so low that we're actually going to take the alternative hypothesis in that case, that there is some correlation. So for part D, it means that there is, whoops, there is a 5% chance that there is no correlation but what we say is that that probability there is so low that it must be the case that there is some correlation there so there's a 5% chance we're wrong but there's a 95% chance that we are correct so there we are that's how we answer these types of questions here then so have a go at uh, finishing the exercise uh, 1c then um, we've finished the chapter now, so also have a go at the um, mixed exercise at the end of this chapter. The questions aren't too bad, really. I think that this is definitely a reasonable chapter and a good start for A2 uh, statistics. So um, take a chance to practice this uh, topic then. Particularly have a go at the problem-solving questions, the exam-style questions, and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Great. Thanks very much for watching.